Good evening, and welcome to St. Agnes. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings for today's liturgy can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1148, number 1148. Our entrance hymn is number 569, Jesus Shall Reign, number 569. Good afternoon. Let us continue our celebration by calling upon God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pause for a moment and consider how we stand before God and one another. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away O 
O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughters Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem the warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks. is faithful in all his words. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal them. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Not only was this passage from St. Matthew's Gospel a favorite of St. Francis de Sales, but he based his entire spirituality on this passage. Gentleness, humility, compassion. Among other titles given to our blessed Francis de Sales, he is often referred to as the gentleman saint. In his introduction to the devout life, he writes, take care that gentleness and humility are found within your heart. Little by little, bring your quick mind around being patient, gentle, and humble, and affable in the midst of the pettiness, in the midst of the childish, in the midst of the imperfection of others. Humility and gentleness are true goods when they preserve us from the inflammation and swelling that injuries usually cause in our hearts. Francis does not exclude ourselves from the need of gentleness and compassion either. He believed that one of the best exercises in gentleness that we can perform is to ourselves. Listen to his words of compassion when we sin. 
I quote, reason requires that we must be displeased and sorry whenever we commit a fault. Yet when we do so, we must refrain from bitter, gloomy, spiteful, and emotional displeasure with ourselves. We correct ourselves much better by calm, steady repentance than by harshness. Even when we find that we have committed sin, Francis wants us to recognize it, to confess it, and to develop a strategy to remain from committing that same sin. But he wants us to do that in a reasonable and in a compassionate way. He writes, alas, my poor heart, here we are, fallen into the pit we so firmly resolved to avoid. Well, we must get up again and leave it forever. Let us start out again on the way by trusting God, because God will help us if we help ourselves. Francis was far ahead of his time in knowledge and application of solid, healthy, sound psychology based on a true understanding of Christian humanism. He realized that inward peace develops when we have confessed, made amends, and incorporated a reasonable and healthy strategy to change. And so he recognized that when you are inwardly peaceful, what is sometimes referred to today as mindfulness, he realizes that when you are inwardly peaceable, you are able to perform many acts of gentleness and by doing so, develop a spirit of compassion, of compassion not only with others, but with oneself. Listen to his words. As long as reason rules and peaceably chastises, corrects, and warns, even though firmly and exactly, everyone can accept it. He ends that section of the introduction to the devout life writing, if we find ourselves aroused to anger, we must call on God's help like the apostles did when the wind and the storm tossed them about. We must remember this life is only a journey to the happy life to come. We must march as companions, united in gentleness, in peace, and in love. Francis warns us to realize that we are not alone in our struggles to life. We are not alone to live a consistent life with the teachings of God. We not only have each other on earth to support us, but we are part of an even larger community, the communion of saints and angels. But it's not magic. We must do our part consciously and willfully, accepting the graces that God sends us, and by using them wisely, reasonably, and in a healthy way, to develop concrete strategies to correct our sinfulness. With serious, repetitive, and habitual behaviors, perhaps God's grace is directing us to spiritual direction or to pastoral counseling to assist in developing these strategies. Today's, God, today's gospel emphasizes that we are never alone. We don't have to face life's challenges and struggles, feeling abandoned or unaided. We are part of an active, grace-filled community. We are part of a church. Think of being in that boat with the apostles when the wind and the storm tossed them about. They depended on each other, and they depended on the grace and the presence of Christ. Let us do the same. And may that same God bless each of you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. having heard God's word and having reflected upon what that word means in our lives, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pause now as we place our petitions before the throne of God. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bueno. And for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound and our deceased, especially Lucille Mill Carrick, John H. Wee, Nguyen Long, and Catherine Dutcher. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Abigail Healy, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions held in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we come before you this afternoon with our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear the petitions which we have spoken aloud and all the prayers and petitions each of us holds in our hearts. We place them before you in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 707, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 707.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through this Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness and into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. May the spring of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the grace eternal taste and see that God is good all who hunger never strangers seek a be a welcome guest come from restlessness and roaming here in joy We have only one announcement this evening. Our poor box collection this weekend is for the Red Cloud Sioux Indian School staffed by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you, through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is number 610, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Number 610. <laughs> His mercy flows.